Sharks are a group of uh, fishes that have unique characteristics that differ them from other kinds of fish, and the most uh, conspicuous being a cartilaginous skeleton. Um, what's really remarkable about sharks is they, they live very differently from other kinds of fish. They're very slow growing, they reproduce at very low rates, which makes them extremely vulnerable to any level of exploitation. Sharks are threatened globally, um, largely because uh, shark fins are used to make a, a soup in, in, the, in, in Asia. For, for that soup, sharks are harvested. The growing market for fins, uh, the shark fin soup, in, it, in addition to the growing need for protein to sustain uh, cultures around the world, um, we've, got, uh, we've got resulting problems when it comes to sharks. Because the role that sharks play within the ocean is top predators, you can have dramatic effects on the ocean or the ecosystem in general if you remove those predators. We call those effects top-down effects. I think a really good example is, say, sharks in the coral reef environment as top predators control other fish species that may eat the coral reef. Once you lose the, the foundation of the coral reef environment, it will collapse. That whole ecosystem will be lost. That example plays out to multiple habitats around the world. So as functional top predators in the ocean ecosystem in general, you remove sharks and you're going to have collapses. I have uh, a shark in the cove. It's about a 14 footer. Roger that. Shark in the cove. We got a shark in the cove. Do this thing. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's bring this thing up. Even though sharks are the, the most probably the most popular fish in the ocean, it's remarkable how little we know about their basic biology. Growth rates, longevity, reproductive biology, even basic feeding ecology. What do they eat? What do they do from day to day? Behavior, migratory patterns. We're scratching the surface on some species and we haven't even touched 400 others. Okay, Nick, little forward. Do your job. Pop is turning. All right. See the heads in the right direction. That's beautiful, George. Nick, Come on, go, 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 down, down. Starcam is a specialized uh, Remus 100 vehicle. It's been equipped with a um, a module up front that is housed with a, a series of GoPro cameras and a navigation system that allows us to track, follow, and film sharks and other um, marine creatures. Right now it's got a pretty good fix on it, okay. so, so it's chasing it. What's unique about it is the, the real-time uh, processing of the little bit of information that's coming back, and that information is three-dimensional. Great. Look at that. Look at that. It's about four meters from the shark. Remus is following the shark, and by doing that, it's interrogating the transponder on the shark. And the transponder replies, and by measuring the two-way sound speed, it's able to determine the range of the shark. And then immediately after that first reply from the transponder, it sends a second ping back to the vehicle. And by deducing the difference between the time it took between those two pings, it's able to determine its depth. Well, one of the first scientific sensors ever integrated on a Remus was a video plankton recorder. So that's where we started. Um, and a dozen years later, now we're at the top of the food chain. The question that we really asked ourselves from science and technology is, can we do this? Can we, can we outfit a Remus vehicle and track a tagged shark and get close and, 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 and film it? What I learned and from a scientific standpoint is uh, that we now have a tool that will help us ask more scientific questions. And that's the part that I'm really excited about, is sitting down with scientists and brainstorming about what questions that they might have to ask. 
Uh, from the perspective of advancing science, marine science in general, I think it's a great step forward. Shark Cam is absolutely, not just for sharks, but specific to sharks. You know, we're now able to perhaps follow these animals in places that we can't normally go. So we'll now have a tool that we can use to go to those places for us and collect information that is valuable not only on direct observations of what these animals are doing but also oceanographic information that will allow us to you know model the habitat in which these animals are living and then ultimately perhaps even take steps to protect that habitat that will lead to conservation of not only sharks but these other marine animals.